As Margot Wendis, played by the iconic Grace Kelly and Mark Halliday, by the always charming Robert Cummings, have a blooming inseparable affair, a relationship that feels perfect, allowing them to find escapism within each other, Margot warns that they must tell Tony Wendis, her husband, about their relationship, ending things with Tony. However, Margot warns that Tony has, in her words, changed. Tony is on the surface a charming individual, but as more is revealed, he is not unlikely the devil wearing a smile as he concocts a malicious plan to murder his own wife by blackmailing an old private school chum, Charles Swan, with the goal of gaining her wealthy inheritance. Even when things don't go exactly to plan, as Margot kills Swan in self-defence mid-attack, Tony is a calculating dangerous force of evil who is likely the most charming man in the room. This is Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, a classic thriller with a screenplay by Frederick Knott, adapted from his own play. Dial M for murder certainly feels very much like its theatre-based source, with the use of incredibly limited space. Much of the film's action takes place within a single apartment room, and the way characters are developed, their intentions revealed through incredibly intricate dialogue interactions. Dial M for Murder delivers a theatrical experience to the cinematic medium, while also embracing the visual aspect of cinema. Props which could reveal Tony Wendis's murderous intentions are concealed, hidden away or ignored, with only the audience aware of what potential damage this could do to the murder investigation, and visual cues, a stopped watch, an open window, a staircase outside of Tony's apartment, all visual images which hold significance to whether Tony Wendis's organised murder succeeds or not, contribute to subtly but effectively adapting a play, an often dialogue-based medium, to the visually enticing cinematic screen. A major highlight of Dial M for Murder is the brilliant Ray Milland as Tony Wendis, charming, handsome and initially unsuspecting, Ray Milland as Tony Wendis is the epitome of intelligently deceptive, often keeping his cool even when his plans don't quite go as expected. The character's intelligence concocts solutions to the situation. When Charles Swan is killed by Margot in self-defence, the stocking which Swan attempted to choke Margot with is, as soon as possible, concealed by Tony, thrown into the fireplace in an attempt to hide the murder item, so his wife can take the blame for the murder when police suspect her of killing Swan, Swan being perceived by the police to be simply a guest. Hiding the stocking serves as an intelligent yet incredibly malicious solution by Tony in his plan to get rid of his wife. If he can't kill his wife successfully, he can at least send her to prison. To be able to concoct a solution like this so coolly, while the pressure of the police's soon arrival and the disturbed state his wife is left in after her shocking encounter with Charles Swan, reveals the depths of psychopathy and devilish charisma which Tony has to work with. He is not easily influenced or impacted by the distress of others when he has his own malevolent intentions to undertake so his plan can go smoothly. Dial M for Murder is a demonstration of Tony Wendis's concoction of a cat and mouse game. It's almost like Tony Wendis appreciates and approves of when Mark Halliday, a crime writer, begins his attempts to resolve this crime. Like a good game of chess, Tony enjoys viewing the strategy which the police inspector and Mark attempt to unravel this crime. Almost like Tony enjoys the challenge of being able to continue outsmarting his opponents. It's quite arrogant of Tony to assume he has fought every aspect of his supposed perfect crime through so clearly, but it also reveals the depths to which he lacks empathy, wasting the resources of police officers on this criminally minded game he has crafted when he could be honest and reveal he has been behind it all along. Mark Halliday likely suspects very early on that Tony could have the potential for this type of planning. Being a crime writer, he is likely researched and written criminal activity to such an extent that he could potentially recognise the makings of a criminal before they have committed such a crime, and Tony knows that suspicion lies around him. Even when Tony Wendis has been discovered to be the culprit of the organised murder attempt, in the final act of the film, his lack of a reaction is quite haunting. He offers a drink to Mark and gently asks the inspector whether he's on duty or not, almost as if to boil the shocking revelation solving the crime at the centre of this film to a more minimal state, as if Tony believes it to be nothing more than an inconvenience. The offering of drinks seems to be his attempt at recovering normality. It's all nothing more than just a game over. He's had his fun and now it's time to move on. With very little, Dial M for Murder cements Tony Wendis to be such a dangerous figure and his lack of acknowledgement regarding it, his lack of remorse, speaks volumes about his antagonistic virtues. In conclusion, Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder is a brilliant theatre adaptation and delivers one of the most despicable
unmistakably charming figures of thriller cinema. Ray Milan's brilliant performance as Tony Wendis is incredibly engaging, managing to carry the challenging balance between charming and disturbed. Antagonists like Tony Wendis are fascinating to study, never venturing towards the stereotypes of villains. Tony Wendis is an adventurous example of how to develop the foundation of an antagonist into something truly memorable.